how did uh, David and Elton do yesterday, and will you have, will they be doing any teamwork today? Yeah, no, they, they did a nice job, and um, yeah, that that's the hope that they can go out there today and do some more team. It's a long season. How much you know, does the factor of the, the field turf not being grass this week kind of play a factor for Robert, Dave, and, and Elton playing as opposed to you know keeping the preserve for the, for the long haul? Well, I know I have I have not given much thought to that at all. So um, that's. You know, our medical staff, I'm sure they're all over it, but uh, as far as we're concerned, um, I mean, that, I don't think that plays a huge role into it. Do you anticipate Alan being able to go anymore today? Uh, we'll see when we get out there. I don't know. What is the deciding factor with the ACL guys? I guess I'll just look them all into to one question. Is it purely a medical decision, or is there something that you need to see from those guys to get them out of there on Sunday? Yeah, well, I'm not the doctor, so um, we can have him come in here and get specific. But each guy is uh, their own person, and they're going to heal at different rates. And we'll see where each guy is. But as far as you can never lump one guy into a category like that. Guys recover at, at different rates, and sometimes the injuries, although they, they may on the surface level look the same, none of them are, are the same. So they're all they're always little intricacies that may affect one more than the other. And then I think you also got to look at what position they're playing and, and what they're asked to do. So, you know, when they get the clearance that, that they're good to go, they'll be out there uh, for us on game day. The last two games you guys have played in Minneapolis have sort of been kind of track mates, very high scoring, both of them have been. Is there a way that your defense can almost slow the pace of this game based on just kind of what they bring to the table? Uh, no, I think it's hard for a defense to slow the pace of a game because usually the offense is going to dictate the tempo of what you play and uh, defensively you have to react. Now the way you slow it down for them is just, uh, I would say, to get off the grass. I don't know, um, but that's the best way to do it. You got to be great on first and second down to create those third and long situations and then find a way to get off the grass. Man, how much, how much more time is spent on like a week one game plan? Just because you guys as coaches have so much time to get ready for this game, is it more than, than like any other week? Of yeah, I'd say way too much time, <laughs> especially when you don't quite know exactly what you're going to get. You, you're talking about a new staff, and obviously, around the league, every team is going to have new wrinkles on a yearly basis. You 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 do a lot of evaluating over the course of the off season and you implement new things and you study other other teams and at least the teams that I've been a part of. Um, and then you got different personnel. So how do you adapt to your personnel? I think that's part of coaching. And our job is to always try to put our guys in the best position possible. And it may not be, hey, here's our system. Well, you may not, that might not fit somebody the best way. So you have to deviate from that in, in, in certain ways. It doesn't mean your whole philosophy changes, but you might have to deviate and, and try to find different ways to help a guy be successful. With that in mind, what is the balance between getting guys like Christian and Romeo, maybe even some more, like wanting to get their feet wet and caught up soon and not necessarily wanting to go in those growing pains in a divisional game? Well, I think this is just is part of it. I mean, you only have X amount of players that uh, can suit up, so, um, you know, it is what it is. When they get their opportunities, we, you, you try to prepare them for it. But ultimately, you know there's going to be there's going to be mistakes made, whether you're a rookie or whether you're in your 15th year. That's just the nature of the beast. And I think the key is how resilient are you? How how can you both in your successes and your failures? How do you just take it one play at a time? So that's what we're hoping to see from each one of those guys and. And we know it's going to be an imperfect game. I'm going to, I, I'll be the first to tell you, I'm going to make many mistakes, I'm sure, with some of the play calls in terms of putting our guys in the best position possible. I hope they bail me out. For, for game planning purposes, how do, you, how do you know where to even start looking at the Vikings? Because obviously the new coordinators you know, and what they did, what Donatell or Kevin did in the past may not, be, might not matter based on their personal, I guess, where, where do you... Where do you start? I think that's where you do start. You you study where places they've been and 
you know, you go off that, but at the same time, it always comes back to you. What are the things that you feel like you do well as a team in all three phases? And, um, you know, I would like to think that the stuff that we give our players has answers for the majority of the things that you're going to see out there. Um, but, you know, week one's always, it's always a crapshoot and it's always interesting. And like I've said yesterday is just, how do you respond and, and make adjustments along the way? I remember you were talking about situational football. I mean, there was a big fluctuation from 20 to 21, third down percentage, red zone production, and you were really going to dive into that. And the, can you just kind of speak to how you feel you've addressed those issues to get that trending back the way you want? Yeah, I mean, it's just, again, it goes back to a little bit of, of who you're playing, and, and um, it is a, a big-time matchup game, and it does present some challenges talking from an offensive perspective when you're not quite sure uh, where guys are going to line or, or what structures are going to be in or what coverages you're attacking. Um, but that's why it always comes back to you, making sure that we have answers for what we believe could be potential um, looks for us. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that's a pretty, it's going to be fluid throughout the course of the year. But we're always trying to, uh, I think a big part of the of our lack of, or I don't want to say lack of success, why we weren't quite as good a year ago was um, really it was third down in the red zone. Um, that really, that, that hurt us. Um, and so, Look, speaking to that, you got to be more efficient on first and second down. So it all is intertwined. Hey, Matt, regarding penalties, when you go into week one, are you a little more concerned about what's going to get called? Did the, when the NFL refs were here, did they have stuff that they were going to emphasize? It didn't seem like there was that many rule changes this year. Now, is the meeting room the place where you address that You know, every day about, hey, that technique doesn't work, it's going to get called? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's so beneficial. We had uh, two sets of officials in here uh, when we scrimmaged against uh, the Saints or practiced against the Saints. And then um, they had time with our players. And we had certain clips, even from last year, that how they viewed certain plays, whether they got called or not, it wasn't to, to you know reflect on the past. It's just to educate our guys on this is how the officials see it, and um, they're always constantly educating our players. And the NFL sends out videos every week on, on certain things. And um, but yeah, no, I think there's you know I don't I have any idea how they're going to call it. Robert came back in your game like practice last week and caught two touchdowns. He hasn't seemed to have a setback since then. Do you get a sense for where his game? I don't mean just playing for week one, but just what, where his game is overall after missing so much time and, and how much if he can return the way he was how much does that do for your offense yeah i think the familiarity not only with with our offensive scheme but with aaron and the um you know just the rapport that they have out on the field i think is big time he definitely trusts them and so he's gonna maybe fit it into the some tighter windows knowing that bobby's gonna make the play and um no i think bobby's looked good and hopefully he continues to progress and um, I think every time he steps out on the field, it gives him a little bit more confidence in knowing that he can do what we're asking him to do. And um, Because I think that's always the trick for players that are coming off an injury, is just the unknown. You know, how does something feel? Or um, they just haven't done certain movements in a long time or haven't had to, um, you know, block 300-pound men or whatever it may be. Uh, it's just the unknown of, of responding to an injury. When it comes to guys Aaron Truss, you obviously has spoken very highly of Allen. At this point, does Allen need to practice to be able to play Sunday, or would you feel comfortable just putting him on the field if he isn't able to? Well, I think all these guys, they have to have the ability to prove that they can play. Um, and certainly we don't want to put anybody in jeopardy of if, if they can't protect themselves or they could – you know, um, are at a higher risk for a, f a further setback. So I think that is kind of um, how, how we think about when determining whether or not a player is available. Minnesota has some good pieces on offense with Cousins and Cook and Jefferson. What's the challenge for your defense going up against that, but also knowing that they now have a coach that 
at least had experience with LA in, in using those players and making a, a, a dynamic system. Yeah, no, I think uh, I, I wouldn't even call them good players. I'd call them great players, uh, all, all those guys. And it's not just those guys. And I talked about it yesterday. I think their offensive line is so much improved. So uh, it, it's a great challenge. And, you know, not, not to, it's not an indictment against I, – I thought last year they were dynamic on offense. So um, how they implement those guys, I'm sure there's, there's a lot of carryover – from uh, who their coordinator was last year with familiarity with kind of the foundation of the scheme dating back to my, the Mike Shanahan days. So, um, you know, I thought they were, they were very tough to defend a year ago, and I'm sure they're going to be very tough to defend this year.